Hello everybody and welcome to a, another video. Today we are flying the PMDG777 service from Incheon, Seoul, uh, Seoul Incheon over to Zurich in Switzerland. Flight is about 10 hours. Let's see, the OFP says 12 hours. Oh, I misjudged that. 12 hours for our flight, which is nice. And uh, yeah, let me just say I grew on this plane Significantly, I really, really like this plane. It is one of my favorites in the sim, besides the Phoenix. One thing I'm not a big fan of with PMDG products is their EFP. Um, I have a I have a theory as to why they made the EFP the way it is, and I know they're going to be improving it and adding features to it. And the Triple Seven already has a new feature that the Seven Thirty Seven should get someday, and they're only going to add more features to it, but. I'm still not a big fan of it. It is very simply made. It's very simple. Um, the takeoff and calculation, uh, landing calculations are there. Um, and you have the diff three different variants there, but it's still not quite what you would expect if you were to compare to a real calculator, so the real deal. And to be fair, I have to say the Phoenix EFB when it comes to takeoff and landing calculations is also pretty simple. That's just my two cents. Trust, I've, I've, I know what a real EFB is like, what kind of things it has, and what kind of things are actually used pretty much all the time by real pilots. And um, these features are also very useful in flight simulation that I haven't seen anybody do yet, except for Eva's Labs, indeed, actually. I think Eva's Labs has the best EFB that you can think of, and I think Flight Factor, the 777 V2 also is up there. It's really good. Once, if I ever make a video on the 777, which I will, but only once the aircraft has um, beat its alpha, maybe even beta phase, it's just this EFB is pretty lackluster. And um, the reason I think the PMG did not include the original Boeing EFP is because they were would have been very limited on what they could add to it. Yes, they could have added all these features that, for example, Flight Factor added, which I think they're great, has great sim reef integration, things like that. But from my understanding, PMDG is very keen and very strict about what they add, which is not realistic necessarily. So I think they're very careful in adding things that are user requests that are not realistic to the real airplane. So adding certain tabs to the EFB that don't exist in the real world would not be something they would like to do. And so I think that is the reason why they decided, well, we want to add all these Navigraph integration features, but we can't do it if we're going to put it in the Boeing EFB. And we will get started with the electrical power up supplementary procedure. Of course, not necessarily realistic in the real world, but we're going to do it anyways. Just so we don't, let's say, forget how to do it. So battery switch on. Electric hydraulic pumps off. The man pumps off. Wipers are off. The landing gear lever is down. And the alternate flaps switch is off and off. Bus ties auto, and we'll establish the ground power unit. So the aircraft powered up. Yeah, are you switched to on? Boost recorder on, although there currently the simulation is not accurately simulated or not accurate accurately done. Get the technical log and since we can't do that in the simulation, what we will do is use this time to load the aircraft. Okay, oil quantity is checked. Trolley quantity is checked. True oxygen is checked. This is still here. I reported this issue recently and they're looking into it. In the real airplane, generally any status message that is on the lower MFD on the stat page would mean that a, that system is faulty. So something is broken and maintenance or engineer would have to take a look at it. In this case, I would think that TCAS, the 
Something's wrong with the TCAS, and I would need to call an engineer to double check this. So, this shouldn't show up. But because I know it's a PMDG thing, I'm going to ignore it. I'm going to say it's fine. It's going to go away once the DRUs are aligned. That seems to be the condition. We'll go ahead and set the parking brake. There's something in the way. There we go. Pressure is still above 1000 PSI, so that's fine. The first officer will check the broadband switch, broadband switch, which is going to be around here. Um, but this aircraft does not have it and arm the emergency exit lights. Now we both would do the performance calculations. I'll go ahead and do that. Runway 16 left is what we expect. Dry. Optimum. CG will use 30. And the weight, what we're going to put in is the maximum takeoff weight for today. Um, or not for today, but the maximum structural takeoff weight the airplane can take. 533. We're going to import the weather. We're going to go 1006 and we're Richard 27 we're going to calculate what we want to do with this is verify that we can take off with the maximum takeoff weight if we needed to and in this case we can if that wasn't the case you would see a message show up telling you that hey please put a value between this and this i'm going to do the same thing for the landing we're expecting one four of 30 ac on auto import the weather calculate and we can indeed land with the maximum landing weight as well and we can continue normally we now log into the company with the company request to uh, do a flight initialization that's not simulated and we'll get our ATIS as well we can get here Also select auto, so in case any changes occur during our pre-flight, we would get those. Information kilo, winds 180 at 17, visibility 999, cancel. Since, the, since it is the first flight of the day or a crew change, now we're going to check the aircraft documents, make sure they're all on board and up to date, that we are allowed to fly with this airplane. I would do a PA system test, which is not simulated. The uh, first officer or whoever is pilot monitoring, doesn't matter, would check the uh, function of the flight deck access system. So he would put in the keypad, um, pin pad, and check to make sure that everything works. And that selecting deny that that system would be here would work. But it looks like they have a different system here, which is not simulated anyways, but And the emergency equipment would be checked, but um, I'm not going to do that. Breaker breakers check. The first officer also checks the lights. Have lights, logo lights as required. It is low visibility. I mean, not really, but it, we have some clouds, so it is a bit darker. I'm going to go and select the logo light to on. And the first officer, in our, this case, would do the walk around and check the equipment for the crew rest. I would do... Um, before we do that, before he does that, we would then do a briefing with the cabin crew, and then he would do that. All right. So I'm going to continue with the CDU preflight.
and this is where um, I start to get a problem with the EFB. The Boeing EFB, because now we have, during this route, we are flying into Chinese airspace, and Chinese airspace requires you to fly with meters, or they have you level off at a specific meter altitude. And so you have to convert those meters into feet, and the official Boeing F uh, sorry, EFB, which also PMDG simulated for P3D, has these calculations available to you. So you could calculate that, which this EFB does not have. I've already said it from the very beginning when the 737 first came out, I wish they would have had the Boeing EFB as an option. And I still wish that because I would much rather, even now, prefer that over this junk. I've said it so many times, I believe. Maybe not in a video, but generally to people. I've said it so many times, but... Uh, The fix page is completed. I think fueling is almost completed as well. It is completed now. So we can now check PNAF. Next page. Optimum 300. Max 320. Recommended 300. That's perfectly within range because we're expected to step to 280 pretty much immediately, which is within this envelope. Progress page. We check. Destination. The distance to go for the destination. According to the to our planned flight plan here, it says 5604, our OFP calculated 5596, so very well within tolerance, which is perfect. We calculated a extra fuel of 16.2, or an arrival fuel of 16.2, I should say, and the OFP calculated 13.2, so this is great so far. go back to route one in it ref page to remind myself that the load sheet has not been received yet the indicator from that for me is that the reserve has not been entered yet all right so the fmc is complete and the first officer will now do his flow since he's back by now we'll check everything it's good healing is completed so seatbelt signs can come on some airlines test the fire Overheats the system, uh, system. 
Normally maintenance does that. So that's all checked. Works correctly. We do have the air conditioning cart. Normally this is something you should do beforehand, but unfortunately we don't have any ground communications that will tell us A, it is now connected, or we are about to connect it. Please, you know, whatever you need to do. So for the air conditioning cart connection, you need to turn off the recirculation fans, both of them, and the packs. They need to be selected off. If it were the 787, since those two airplanes have this common type rating, it is just the lower that you need to turn off. So for the 787, this is the configuration you would be in. Alright, the rest is all auto, everything is checked. That's good to go. You can continue with your first officer flow, so we'll just continue on the right. Flight director on. Go to checklist. We'll reset all. Done. We'll, we'll check the podcast messages, make sure they are all normal, which they are, and then cancel. And then um, we'll check the system pages. Um, we can do it on our side. Here, pressures are all checked. About 200 PSI. Oxygen test. Unfortunately, the simulation is limited, but it's at least set to 100%. But it is limited. In the PCD version, they did a little bit more. You could actually switch between the different modes and test them. Date is checked. Time is also checked. RTO, no V speeds and TCAS off are normal in this case. Airport data will select as well for his side. And he's the one, since he's going to be the pilot monitoring, he's going to be the one setting the frequencies. And normally he would set VHF left on his side since he's the one communicating. But for my purposes, I'm going to leave it at VHF right. This is set as desired. I'm going to set Unicom for good practice. And emergency frequency or guard frequency 1 to 1.5 on the right. The only thing that the first officer basically does not do is set up the ACPs for the different uh, pilots or observers. He only does his side. The rest he does pretty much check. He would do a weather radar test. I don't know if it's really simulated. You can test it. Kind of is. I didn't want to. Monitor that. radar display. There we go. That's what I wanted. Go around. Wind shear ahead. Yeah. That's completed. This is all checked. I'll check. You can also do a TCAS test, but this panel I don't think supports the TCAS test. We'll set above. Above. And the rest is checked. On the captain side. I don't know why. I, I know I talk like I'm doing a tutorial. Um, <laughs> sorry if that's annoying. Okay, so I select flight path vector and meters in this case because we will require meters in the Chinese airspace. I selected meters as a reference, airport data, traffic, and we're going to set our minimums. The minimums we're going to set is our minimums for our return runway. So we're expected to return to runway 16 right in case of an engine out or any kind of failure that would require us to return. And the minimums for run runway 16 right is 223 feet. I'm going to select 223 feet, like director on, auto throttle arm, IS stays at 200. We're going to use track in case of engine out procedures. And the track is 153. Uh, th th this is all different airline dependent. Most airlines use heading, some airlines use track. Is climb via SID, so we're gonna go ahead and set 17,000 flight level 170 plus 100 because we didn't get ATC clearance yet. And that is check. Good, no B speeds, TCAS off, Toga Toga, rest is checked. This is all checked down here at our ACP done and the rest is checked all right now we are both completed we can do the pre-flight checklist oxygen test at 100 percent flight instruments heading 082 082 altimeters 1007 1007 and 40 feet so these two need to be within 35 feet and the 
Altitude needs to be within 75 feet of the elevation, which is checked. Pre-flight checklist completed. I'm going to set the door page on my side. And with that, we just wait for boarding to complete and to get the load sheet, and then we're pretty much ready to go. Alright, so loading is completed, so we can go ahead and turn our zero fuel weight, which hasn't changed. Our final reserve is going to be 8 tons exactly. Well, we'll set that in. The takeoff calculations. Import 1.6 left, dry, import from aircraft this time. Auto off, optimum, optimum, import weather. So again, 1006, this time temperature 26. We'll calculate that. So takeoff standard. 45 degrees, assume temperature. We have 97.5, that's about right, because the packs are currently off. Flaps 5, EG is 27.2, so 27%. NADP is none, so we're going to use the standard values here. And we're going to use 1500 for the engine acceleration. The rest is not important since we have calculated it here. 173. Within one knot is fine. Let's try 188. On that VNAV armed, everything else is set and checked. Right, we'll go ahead and start the APU. I just did the departure briefing. Air conditioning card is released. We can apply the recirculation fans and the packs. All doors and automatic. Cycle back to NAV. Before start items. Light system first. Start by the fault light. Make sure it's 3000 psi. Right. And then T1, T2. Left. T1, T2. That we require all of them. Beacon on. Recall effect. And trim set to 5.25 units. Before start checklist. Slight dig doors closed and locked. MCP B2 188 track 153 altitude. 17,000 or Take off speeds V1173, VR185, V2188. That's CG pre flight completed. Rooms 5.25 units, and 0 and 0. I see take off briefing completed. Four star checklist completed. Commencing course. Oil engine check clear. Start date to oil. Starting number two. Well, pressure. Starting one. Well, pressure. That's five. On that gear. I can do a check. Pull up. Down, control, All right, left, go, left, control, recall checked, TCAS off, we'll leave that up as a reminder, and before task to check with anti-ice auto, recall checked, light control is checked, ground equipment is clear, Receive. Check this complete. Alright, we're good to go. Lights on. Use the brakes. We'll get out of here.
little bit of weather there. Oh, I'm gonna prioritize terrain on this side. Weather on that side. And we're gonna wait for him to cross if he does cross. Alright, clear for takeoff. Lights. Camera. In action 55%. And Togo. You're not old. gears coming up. I'm not sure why I needed so much rudder. I need to use a lot of rudder for that. We don't... We didn't have a crosswind until just now, so that's really strange. All now, V now speed, thrust ref. One. Up. 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 Come on. After takeoff checklist. After takeoff checklist complete. Alright, so we have reached uh, almost, we have almost reached top of the scent, and so we will start to plan with it now. First off, let's go ahead and check the weather. We'll check recall, go new messages. Or two one, can I go to two two? Alright, so that means we'll take Romeo's roll, uh, Romeo one four, which I believe is already entered. Um, first, we'll go ahead and calculate our landing performance. Romeo one four, thought over two, the rest is checked. Like, go out of break three then. We're fine, it's 530. Nope, that's the problem. Play again. There we go, 530, out of break three. Now to the FMC. 30 is entered. Working arrivals, Alice 14, Negra to Alpha departure uh, arrival is checked. 
including its check and the legs are also good with all the restrictions are correct but we'll check that with in plan mode okay runway at one four in the fix forecast we'll load position altitude is flat level eight zero We'll plug in 8000 as a pseudo waypoint. And the engine out is. At 40 and Kloten, direct. Burish. Good copy. Progress page is checked. Frequency communication is good. I'm a navrad, nothing that we necessarily require. We can put Kloten on the left and Zurich on the right. The minimums is 1,602 feet. Alright, I'm just going to quickly do the approach briefing and then we'll do the descent checklist. Approaching minimums. Minimums. To new. One hundred. Fifty. Thirty. Twenty. Ten. Alright, the APU is running, so engine's off. From shutdown. Okay. 
I'll leave the right on just for a second until they pressurize, uh, depressurize. The pumps come off. You can come off. So I'm all doors. They're all disarmed. The lens can come off. And I'll turn off the right electric pump as well. Alright, shut down checklist. We have the trucks in place. Parking brake can come off for cooling. Parking brake is off. Shut down checklist is completed. We'll also request the air conditioning cart. We'll turn off the recirculation fans and packs. And there we have it. So, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. And we'll see you all in the next video. It might be the MD11 from TFDI. We'll just see. But either way, there will be a next video. Till then, peace.